Then, with Bishop on air, we've been tracking the ongoing litigation against Illinois' gun and magazine ban. Of course, uh, back around January 10th, you had the law that was enacted statewide, uh, banned more than 170 different semi-automatic rifles, shotguns, handguns, magazines over certain capacities. Uh, it also had a registry component where the deadline for that is coming up in 30 days. Uh, so at the end of December 31st into January 1st, if you don't register a semi-automatic firearm or a band attachment or 50 caliber uh, categories, then uh, you could find yourself being turned into a felon overnight. Uh, obviously, this has been sued on state level, on federal level. You've got cases from the Southern District and the Northern District Courts that were consolidated into the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals has sided with the state saying they have a likelihood of success. But uh, one case it really kind of came before all of the cases against the state's case, and that is the case out of Naperville. And why that is uh, is because, well, Naperville had a ban well before the, the state did, uh, months before the state did. So now we've got uh, some news that broke yesterday with the U.S. Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett telling the states that they now have till December 6th to respond to the states uh, to the to the motion from uh, law weapons uh, Robert Beavis out of uh, Naperville and uh, the National Association for Gun Rights uh, looking to have an injunction on this case. Uh, so joining us is uh, of course Robert Beavis and Hannah Hill from the National uh, uh, Association for Gun Rights. And Hannah, you know, we we talked about this before, but I guess if you could just kind of what makes this request to Amy Coney Barrett different than the previous requests when you guys brought it uh, before the Seventh Circuit actually took the case and had those oral arguments? Right. Well, that's a very good question. And a simple answer is this. Um, the first time we asked for that emergency relief from the Supreme Court, the Seventh Circuit had not ruled. And the Supreme Court's position for Second Amendment cases ever since Bruin has generally been to take a hands-off approach until the lower court process is finished. Now, in our view, it was worth a shot because a right delayed is a right denied. Um, Naperville and now Illinois are denying the gun rights of law-abiding Illinoisans and literally putting Robert out of business. And so it was worth a shot. Um, and we had hoped that the Supreme Court would see it that way. They did not, but only after the Seventh Circuit saw that the Supreme Court was looking at the case and then said, all right, tell you what, we'll expedite our side of it. Um, so they put us on what our lawyer calls the rocket docket. They And we got our oral arguments on that case much sooner than we normally would for an appellate level case. Um, we just got that ruling back not long um, earlier. This uh, It's December now. We got it back at the beginning of November. And it was one of the worst rulings we've ever seen. They literally ruled that America's rifle, the AR-15, is not a gun as far as the Second Amendment is concerned. Um, and it should tell you what kind of arguments we're dealing with, that that's the kind of argument they had to resort to in order to make any sort of a case that, you know, they can uphold the Illinois assault weapons ban. So the, to answer your question, uh, the difference is that now we've got a ruling from the Seventh Circuit. And um, we have asked for the entire review of, the, of all 14 judges on the Seventh Circuit, but that's an extra step. They aren't required to grant it to us. We are not entitled to that hearing. Um, and so the fact that we have in hand uh, a Seventh Circuit ruling that is outright defiant of not just one, but two Supreme Court precedents on the Second Amendment, we think is a very compelling case for the Supreme Court. So if you could talk a bit about, um, I guess, what's the precedent that you guys are looking for uh, the U.S. Supreme Court to, I guess, double down on um, against right. what the Seventh Circuit did. Uh, what are some of the, the the major issues in that precedent for people who may not have been tracking this the entire time right. or even know about what Bruin is or what Heller is? Uh, talk about, uh, um, you know, I guess, again, what you guys are looking for the, the U.S. Supreme Court to, to uh, double down on and, and, and have that preliminary injunction while the discussion continues all the way back up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Right. Well, um, there are two of them. One is the 2008 case, um, Heller, Chicago, um, D.C. versus Heller. That In that case, uh, the Supreme Court basically said that um, you have a right to have firearms in your home, basically doubling down on the right to possess firearms, right? Um, they said things like, basically, you cannot outright ban firearms that are in common use. Uh, they said that all arms, all bearable arms are protected by the Second Amendment. So that 
alone should make this case a slam dunk. But then last year, they gave us the case, the Bruin case. That was a challenge to New York's um, de facto ban on public carry. They had left it so discretionary for public officials to deny permits to carry firearms that it was almost impossible to get one. And self-defense wasn't a good enough reason in the eyes of the law to grant you that special permission to carry a gun. So um, with that case, the Supreme Court said, not only do you have a right to possess arms, as we said in Heller under the Second Amendment, but the Second Amendment protects your right to bear arms as well. But we're going to take it a step further. They also struck down what's called interest balancing. So the lower courts had invented what they called a two-part test every time they got a gun case before them. They would essentially run a cost-benefit analysis on the Second Amendment. They would say, okay, well, what is this, the public interest of this gun control law? And then they would balance that against the Bill of Rights guarantee. And Almost every time, gun rights got the short end of the stick because it was never about the facts at all. It was always about, let's find a way we can get around the Second Amendment. We can circumvent that and say, you know, it's a good idea to have gun rights, but we think it's just too dangerous because we don't like it. We are not comfortable with the idea of law-abiding citizens having guns for self-defense. So the Supreme Court in Bruin said, you cannot do that. Now, the nice thing, <laughs> I say the nice thing, thing that makes our argument so easy to the Supreme Court right now is that in the Seventh Circuit ruling that we're appealing, they violated all three. They violated Heller when they said that um, AR-15s are not guns. They violated Heller when they said that that a weapon that is owned by tens of millions of Americans, and that's a conservative estimate, is, is not in common use. And then they violated Bruin when they resorted again to that interest balancing test and they took it a step further and said we don't think the Supreme Court actually struck down interest balancing and it could not have been more clear that that's exactly what the Supreme Court did do in Bruin so it's this is a very very defiant ruling um, and all we're asking the Supreme Court is to confirm that they meant what they said in both Heller and Bruin. We're talking with uh, Hannah Hill. She is with the National Association for Gun Rights with a case up at the U.S. Supreme Court uh, asking for uh, the Supreme Court to intervene. Uh, so, Hannah, if you could give us kind of what some of the outcomes could be, right? I mean, December 6th, the state has right. to respond. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since the Seventh Circuit has already acted, um, could there be a preliminary injunction put on the law while the case gets up into the U.S. Supreme Court and there's uh, oral arguments and a decision down the line, or could they just not do anything and then the January 1st deadline kicks in, but the court case still continues? What are, what are some of the outcomes there, if you could spell that out for us? Right. So basically what you just said there. So um, what we're asking for is an injunction. Uh, you know, an injunction would block the enforcement of both the neighborhood ordinance um, that's pre preventing Robert from selling his guns and for of the state law that's preventing Illinoisans from po from possessing these after the new year, unless they've registered them. So we're asking for that injunction to suspend these laws, prevent them from being enforced um, throughout the en banc review, as it's called, if we get the full 14 judge review from the Seventh Circuit and any subsequent petitions to the Supreme Court. So we've kind of signaled to the Supreme Court that if we lose that en banc review or if they don't give it to us, we're appealing the full case on the merits up to the Supreme Court. And we would like this injunction to apply throughout that whole process. So basically, we're asking the Supreme Court to suspend the enforcement of that law until the case is decided. Um, now, for an emergency appeal like this, um, they go first to the Supreme Court justice that's assigned to that particular circuit. In the case of the Seventh Circuit, that's Amy Coney Barrett. And she has the authority to grant this injunction all on her own. She could do it. Um, she could also forward it to the entire court and have all the justices take a look at it and weigh in on it and decide as a group. Or she could just reject it. Now, the fact that she hasn't said no already gets us much further than most emergency appeals get. Um, the fact that she's asked for a briefing, that she's turned to Illinois and Naperville and said, now give me your best arguments for why we should not grant this relief. Um, that's hugely encouraging, but it's not a guarantee that they will say yes. So um, she could grant that injunction or the whole court could grant the injunction or they could say no. They could also say no conditionally, which they have done before in other Second Amendment cases. We're going to say no um, as long as the en banc court decides whether or not to give review by such and such a date. 
And if it takes too long, the, you know, we're going to encourage an AGR and Robert Beavis to come back to us fairly quickly, more or less. They've kind of done that sort of thing before. So that's a possibility as well. Um, if they say no, then we will fight out round two in front of the Seventh Circuit. And if we lose there, we will be back before the Supreme Court on the merits. Hannah, of course, this is just an Illinois case, uh, right? And it's just one right. gun store out of Naperville. Uh, you've got the cases down in the Southern District. I don't know how closely you've been following that, but you've got the Federal mm -hmm. Firearms Licensees of Illinois trying to block the January 1st deadline with a judge that's already granted a preliminary injunction. We've got challenges of the Illinois Firearm Owners Identification Card pending in state and federal court. It, this is just Illinois. Uh, where else throughout the country are these hot spots flaring up? And what are some of the, I guess, um, common themes that there are where we have uh, gun control measures, uh, arguably right. infringing upon the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms? Well, one of the big themes is assault weapons bans. And in fact, that's our that's our primary focus. And this case is one of seven that we have filed across the country against both standard capacity magazine bans and so-called assault weapons bans. The reason is because we think that that particular law, that particular measure of gun control, uh, is pretty close to the core of what the Second Amendment is all about. Uh, but then you also have um, three-day waiting periods. You have um, 18 to 20 gun bans. Um, you also have so-called Bruin response bills where um, after Bruin struck down, said, okay, you can't leave it up to the discretion of a public official to say, do you have a good enough reason to want to carry a gun? Um, some states kind of doubled down on that with good moral character requirements. So in whose, in whose opinion, right? That's also a discretionary scheme. That's also in direct defiance of Bruin. New York did that, and that's currently being litigated. You also have more gun control laws than you can shake a stick at, as my dad would say, uh, being litigated in California. Um, those in particular, two of the most prominent ones there are their challenges to the assault weapons ban and the magazine ban. Um, those were actually at the Supreme Court when Bruin was. And after they handed down Bruin, they kicked those two cases back to California, back to the Ninth Circuit and said, now go, you got these wrong, go back and read what we said in Bruin and try again. And then they kicked the can further. They sent it back down to the district court level. Um, we just got those rulings. Um, I say we're the, we, the gun rights community just, um, got those rulings and those are very positive as we expected for that particular judge. Those are going back to the Ninth Circuit and will probably be delayed because the Ninth Circuit has shown no sign of wanting to actually comply with Bruin. We also have another major assault weapons ban case um, that um, our entire community has been watching out of Maryland. Um, this, we are simply waiting for the Fourth Circuit there to hand down their panel decision on Maryland's assault weapons ban. And then Mer the plaintiffs there will have the choice of whether or not to ask for en banc review, as we did, or appeal it straight to the Supreme Court. So Illinois' case and Maryland's case are the two assault weapons ban cases that are basically furthest along in the process. They're only one step away from the Supreme Court on the merits. In our case, we're already asking for Supreme Court review um, on an emergency basis. So it's not going to be long before this issue lands on the desk of the justices and they will have to deal with it one way or another. No question. Uh, Hannah Hill, National Association for Gun Rights, greatly appreciate your time. And I know Robert Beavis from Law Weapons is hanging out there in the back. Just briefly, Robert, yep. how important and significant is this to you as somebody in the industry exercising your Second Amendment uh, that uh, this case is actually now uh, very likely going to be having some kind of determination from the U.S. Supreme Court? Well, I'll tell you, Greg, it would be, you know, heaven to hear that they uh, actually put this in, uh, injunction in place. I'm very hopeful. You know, it surprises me that, uh, that, you know, she's taken this case basically twice now. And when you read the ruling uh, or the opinion and ruling from the, the federal uh, appellate court, it's just so egregious. You know, you you go through it and it's like they, they literally are slapping the Supreme Court right in the face. You know, so when when we filed this and there was first this little issue about the gatekeeper and getting it into the Supreme Court, but um, it was denied in the appellate court. So we were able to go ahead and file it. And I'm very hopeful it can make a huge change. Right now we are really, you know, living on life support pretty much. And uh, we need we need some relief so that we can at least try to rebuild. You know, it may take, you know, 
many, many years to get back to where Law Weapons was. And I don't know that we actually can get that uh, far again, uh, you know, the time left and, and the amount of damage that's been caused so far. But, you know, I'd love nothing more but than to be able to at least get back to work, help the uh, people of Illinois, you know, fight their rights, keep their rights um, from the state and the city of Naperville and just do whatever we can as, you know, good citizens to, to help everybody. And that's that's really why we started this whole thing. You know, we could have packed up and moved away, but we said, let's stand and fight. Let's uh, let's fight for everybody who really doesn't know what to do. Since we're in the industry, we, it's not only affecting us, it's affecting everybody. We said we have the best chance of trying to make this happen. And without the National Gun Rights Foundation, we would have gotten, you know, nowhere. They have been a tremendous help. I think every person out there needs to be a member of their organization. If you're not, you're really missing out. They are, you know, advocates and they're in the forefront of this. And I have never had a better relationship with any of the other um, gun, uh, you know, advocates out there, the different companies. And uh, so I recommend it. I tell everybody, please go over there. First of all, send an email to Hannah and say hi, and uh, and then sign up and become a member of National Gun Rights and help us all fight this, you know, and uh, we're fighting for you. So hang in there and uh, it would be a great thing for this to happen. And I think it will. I think she's going to she's going to rule in our favor on this one. Well, and, and Hannah, if you could uh, just here briefly, um, I want you to also give the information where people can get more info about uh, the National Association for Gun Rights. But uh, to what Robert was saying, saying irreparable harm. I mean, it, that, that sounds like what he's experiencing right now. Well, how, how, how significant is that in the request for an emergency injunction? Well, we think it's hugely significant. Um, the, the response that Naperville has always re res resorted to um, is if we win the case, we can always ask for damages. But, you know, damages after the fact aren't going to make up for the fact of all the loss, the fact that he's essentially more or less lost his business and will have to rebuild. But even that from a legal perspective is not as significant as the fact that any day that you're trampling on a constitutional right, there is no remedy for that. And Robert's rights have been trampled on. The rights of law-abiding citizens of Illinois have been trampled on. That is not okay. There is no remedy for that. And we hope that the Supreme Court will recognize the gravity of this situation. And if you could also, again, to, just tell us, uh, you know, where people can find uh, more information about your organization and uh, uh, if they feel they, uh, they can support, uh, support you guys. Absolutely. So you can find more information about our organization at gunrights.org. Um, you can find more information about the legal side at gunrightsfoundation.org. So either of those sites will get you where you need to go. Um, we would love to have the support of anybody who is interested in fighting for the Second Amendment. Again, uh, Hannah Hill, uh, Robert Beavis, thank you both for taking time with me this morning. And uh, we'll be talking again soon because December 6th is uh, just around the corner. Uh, so we'll all be anxiously watching to see what the state's reply is going to be. Uh, take care, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks okay, so much, thank Greg. Thank you, Greg. Take All care, right. Greg. Bye you bye. too. Uh, it is uh, Bishop on air. Greatly appreciate them taking the time with us uh, as we broadcast here. And uh, of course, if you missed any of that coming in live, you can rewind or you can find the segment whenever it goes live here soon. Uh, but uh, we're going to connect again with uh, Robert Beavis next week uh, to talk more about the law bolt uh, and uh, it really delve a little bit deeper into that. Also next week, uh, we've got to start going through the the frequently asked questions. I'm getting questions that I don't know the answer to. People are emailing me about, well, this January 1st deadline's around the corner. Uh, can I move my firearm out of uh, the state and be okay? Or do I have to file an affidavit regardless? Or what's going on there? A lot of Q&A and the frequently asked questions getting changed. Um, but uh, we'll obviously be unpacking a lot of that and more. Uh, have yourselves a great weekend. Don't forget to support Bishop on Air. Uh, you could do so by going below on the YouTube feed and uh, getting yourself a coffee mug, a T-shirt, a hat. I had a whole bunch of stuff I was going to flash, but uh, left it in the other room. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, but we'll be, you know, showing off some of that stuff. But uh, you can also uh, just nearly just tell your friends about the program. All right. Have yourself a great weekend. We'll be back here Monday morning. Same Bishop on Air channel. Same Bishop on Air time. And uh, boy, we got a lot to cover. All right. December 6th, state has to respond to the Naperville case in the U.S. Supreme Court. 
December 12th, you've got the Southern District of Illinois in the hearing with the federal firearms licensees trying to block the January 1st deadline. December 14th, the state has to respond to the Dan Calkins case to the U.S. Supreme Court. And uh, we'll watch all the pieces drop into place each and every weekday morning right here. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good weekend.